Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast. Today, Josh and I are bringing you a special episode about the coronavirus from quarantine. Actually, we're not really in quarantine, like we're not ill, but we are taking the recommended procedures from both the federal government and our state government to work from home if possible. So I'm sitting in my office, Josh sitting in his bedroom, and we're recording to you. We are ready to go. We're ready to roll. So yeah, a lot has been happening over the last week, and uh, we thought we would do our best to keep you up to date with kind of the progression of COVID-19 and uh, talk about really what's going on because this is a very busy time of, you know, the financial markets, our careers, this podcast, and we are trying to keep you as well informed as possible. So, Josh, what is the latest? How yeah. are cases coming? What's going on? Yeah. So right now, what we're looking at globally, there's been over two hundred thousand, about two hundred and five thousand cases confirmed globally. Uh, those are confirmed cases again, um, and then we've seen. 8,270 deaths. And so that's globally. Uh, a lot of those were in China early on, but they've slowed down and we've seen it move more towards Europe and the Italy area. It amounts to about a 4% death rate currently from tested confirmed cases in the amount of deaths compared to that. Now that's, there is... That's a little high. That seems yes. high. Woo. Yep. But also remember that eighty, almost 83,000 have fully recovered. And so that's a 40% of those that have been tested have fully recovered. Now, the remaining group there are still in the process, whether they're um, severe or not. You know, that's just the number of cases globally confirmed. Right. Here in the United States, we have uh, about 6,500 cases confirmed and 116 total fatalities. So that's actually a 1.8% rate um, based on the confirmed cases. Now, we have a lot fewer confirmed cases. We had some issues with getting test kits available. so. They were only testing those that were high risk or severe. So I wouldn't be surprised if that rate does move up for a little while until they start testing more and more people, then you'll see that rate drop back down. Yeah, I think that, you know, the further we get into this, the more we're going to have actual numbers. And so the denominator is going to go up, which means the fatality rate overall is definitely going to go right. down over time. But it, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's having an impact around the world. And we're starting, you know, we're only in the beginning of this in the United States. Yep. Um, and it's it's going to continue to grow for a while. Yeah, and you can tell that by the recovery cases too. There's been about 106 recovered cases in the U.S., right? Uh, which is about one percent again compared to the 40 percent we've seen globally since the beginning. So it was delayed getting here to the U.S., and so we're uh, you know a couple weeks behind the everybody else when it comes to the progression. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I guess breaking news as of this morning. So this is being recorded on Wednesday, the 18th of March, 2020. Breaking news as of this morning is that President Trump has announced he is temporarily closing the northern border to Canada, which is interesting because Canada had kind of already closed the border. And that's, I don't know what, how many borders they have. Not too many. Um, they closed but, the border, but the U.S. was still, U.S. people were still allowed to move through. So now that is that is closed down. So we are doing our best as a country to really prevent the spread even further. Um, so that's kind of a big deal as that will be a lot more difficult and delayed for people to get across the border either way for a while. And then here, we're in Ohio where, where we are recording. Um, our Governor DeWine has been kind of the one of the leading governors here in the U.S. when it comes to initiating um, changes or suggestions or issuing decrees to make the best effort to curve this growth rate. And so some of the things he did was uh, Tuesday, yesterday was voting. Uh, and so he postponed, and uh, although he did not have the authority to actually cancel or postpone it, he submitted a lawsuit on behalf of people who would be affected um, on, and asked that the judicial branch here in Ohio suspend voting or move it to a later date. And so that was Monday when he announced that. Monday night, the judge said no. And I went to bed. And the next morning, I woke up super early so I could get to the polls before work because I'm trying to be a good citizen and, uh, and do my duty and vote. I uh, got dressed 
ate my breakfast, was heading out the door when my wife turned on the news and said, oh, look, they canceled voting. Yeah. I would not have known. I would have shown <laughs> up changed. an empty church where my voting is. And um, so it turns out that later that night, they, they reissued and uh, another judge did decide to push it down the road. Well, it was actually the, so the, the, the health, doctor, yeah, the, health, the, the yes. health, yeah, they decided it was a health emergency and then have then that was able to be used as right. the reasoning there. So I think it's, it's not the voting was canceled. So no. you can still go a lot of, early. You could yes. go get your ballot or you can right get now. a paper or you can mail in your ballot or yes. whatever. So many, I've, you know, all over Twitter or, or whatever right now, people are going crazy thinking that people have taken you know the governor has taken away their right to vote and no one is doing that everyone so let's stop freaking out it is a health reason why yeah. we're doing this they're going to have the really primary later yeah this is to protect you know older mostly older voters who would go and vote not this just older a, voters who runs those polling stations older normally. people yes. yeah normally that's who's their volunteer so the more susceptible people are going to be would have been impacted by this and this yeah. is really to protect them um so really i think it's june 2nd um which is my wife's birthday that is going to be the, the date that the primary will actually be tentatively moved until and that's the latest date i think uh dewine said that it can still be pushed before the convention for the Democrats, yeah. really, um, to still be kind of counted in their in their yeah. figures. So, if you don't want to wait, you could go get a paper ballot or an absentee ballot and vote exactly. now. Exactly. Uh, or you could wait till that day and vote in person at the polling station. I think that one change that's going to come out of this whole thing is that hopefully we can move to a system where you can vote from your phone. Yeah, there have to be a lot eventually. of safeguards put in yes, place. Yes, but, yeah. but but I think we're headed there eventually Yeah, for things like this. Yeah. Um, Coming back yeah, to so, DeWine, he also is, issued a closure of restaurants and bars. And that was, one, again, one of the early states to do that. Um, Illinois and New York followed suit with some of those closures afterwards. But it was had a lot to do with uh, this last weekend, heading into St. Patty's Day, uh, college students, because they closed the universities, decided, hey, we have nothing to do. Let's go out. And there was a lot of bars and places crowded over the weekend. And so, in a sense, Governor DeWine said, hey, if you can't self-police, I will help you. And so yeah. he, he closed things down. And I guess to clarify that, that is for sit-in dining yes. only. Yes. So he's been very, very adamant about keeping takeout and drive through and that kind of thing open because a lot of people depend on that each day or, mo or a lot of days or once a week or whoever, however many times you do that to eat of some sort. So yeah, yeah those factors are still open, but that is what is contributing a lot to some of our, the employment situation because a lot of people are employed in that industry and it's having a pretty big impact on them. Yep. And as a result, then he's followed that up with now closing down the bowling alleys and any place where there'd be large gatherings, he's closed those down um, temporarily to, again, avoid large groups of people getting together and, and possibly spreading this virus. And again, you have the virus and can infect others even before you have symptoms. So it's not even like people are being irresponsible when they don't feel good and going out. They could have this virus, spread it to others before they even realize it. Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. So that is kind of what's going on in Ohio specifically. They've also discouraged unnecessary travel in general. And there's actually like some like banners on the highway that say, Hey, you know, don't do any unnecessary travel if you don't have to, just because we're trying to, to to self-isolate as much as we can to prevent the spread person to person, even if you don't know you have it. Yep. The best thing you can do is to stay home. Yep. And, and that's he, why we're that's why we're home right now. Yes. And he mentioned, you know, try to avoid groups of ten or more. And there was talk of it moving down to five or more five or less. And my thought was, well, I have six in my household with the four kids. Who are you kicking uh, out? Yeah. Whoever doesn't get the room clean, who's ever at the bottom of the chore list is gonna, hey, you better pick up your game. You're on you're on the chopping block right that's now. That's right. <laughs> So there's a number of things that I've been watching over the last really 24 hours or so. Um, some of those things being that uh, we got news that Chinese auto sales were down in February, 80%, the worst month on record. And that was obviously due to coronavirus impact there. And my anticipation is that we will see something similar as this uh, kind of shutdown ish economy takes place here in the states so that is not a great thing for our auto sector not a great thing for the employees for that because the uaw the union has been pushing for 
some plant shutdowns and stuff like that, just because there's so many people in those plants and they can easily spread things back and forth. So that is something that we are, uh, you know, that we're watching for sure. Also, over the last day or really week, due to the Federal Reserve's kind of actions to to really instill some extra liquidity in the market, they've been buying up assets and that's pushed yields back up. So cash in the market pushes prices down, which pushes yields up. And that is kind of a good thing. But the fact that we had to do that really wasn't that great because demand, whew, tough. Also, in the last 24 hours, Joe Biden won Illinois, Michigan, and Florida primaries. Now, Ohio did not have theirs. Michigan, Illinois, and Florida did continue to have them yesterday. In my opinion, I would have done what we did here in Ohio and push that because I think that's a lot of people in one place could have exposed a lot of people and we could have pushed that back if we would have (laughs) slowed it down. But uh, that did happen yesterday and Joe Biden won those all pretty much sealing up the Democratic nomination against Bernie Sanders. So that really happened. Um, And as of electionbettingodds.com or .org, I don't remember which one it is. We'll link it in the show notes. It's pretty much a dead heat between Joe Biden and President Trump in the fall looking at November. So that's a pretty big deal there. Um, What else is going on here? Crude oil is under $30 a barrel and with no anticipation that that is going to increase anytime soon, there really isn't going to be any reason for a spike in demand for the foreseeable future. So wow, that is just unbelievably low oil prices. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I guess that leads into the discussion of yesterday's market rally. So yesterday was Tuesday the 17th. We saw 13, 1200 points, 1300 points on the Dow. A good rally. Um, but what that was anticipation of is a fiscal stimulus package from the government. And what that looks like is President Trump wanting about $1.2 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars of stimulus into the economy coming from a couple different things. Number one, direct payments of $1,000 or more to families within two weeks. That is coming up quick, but we still don't have for sure details on that. Another thing is if this thing continues on, so through the end of April, another $250 billion of money distributed. If it continues into the end of May, another $500 billion distributed. What Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin says is that if we do not get this fiscal stimulus package, we could see unemployment of about 20%, about twice what we saw during the recession we had uh, in the financial crisis. So that is big. And that is what the lack of details, I guess, and the lack of faith that it's really going to do what it needs to do to stimulate the economy is what's driving markets down today, giving up most of yesterday's gains. And this week, we're seeing uh, overall 12% uh, losses in the markets over the S&P 500. And that is a pretty big number for one week. We're down about 29 to 30% from all-time highs. And that is uh, definitely moving markets. Yeah. And that stimulus package, I mean, the idea there is, well, when restaurants are closed, when those bars are closed, when all those you know bowling alleys, everything's closed, the employees aren't earning anything. So they're home, no income. But then the owners of the businesses have no income and their uncertainty of who do I hire? Who do I bring back? When do I bring them back? If I bring workers back to work, but no one shows up, I have to pay them. And so there's this whole concept of, and like you talked about this, unemployment is not only temporary while everything's closed, but when they reopen, will every business rehire everybody that was there if they're worried about the demand? Right. And I guess another thing that is a big part of this puzzle is taxes. And something that's being discussed is for for A, for small businesses, there is like under a million dollars of taxable income. You can postpone your tax payment 90 days, which is a pretty big deal. That puts you out into July. Um, and also they're, they're, the, the IRS is loosening up tax day for normal, you know, everyday W-2 people as well, so that hopefully they can just kind of get by and not have to to pay those checks or whatever right away and hopefully keep a little bit more money in people's pockets for a while. Yeah. So, you know, if people are filing their taxes and haven't yet, there's some flexibility. They say still do file your taxes, but if you owe, you can wait yeah. to pay. And there's no penalty, no interest for that waiting. Yep. But you still so- need to file though. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they don't don't not file your taxes. And one thing they talked about, I think President Trump talked about yesterday, was that specifically speaking, if you're going to file your taxes online through like TurboTax or whatever, anyway, do it. It's not a. It's it's going to be fine. It helps them out. It helps you out. 
Uh, but I guess it's, this is probably aimed at more at the people who have very complicated tax returns. You have a little bit more flexibility there. Yeah. And so that's the big idea there is um, file your taxes. But when it comes to the payment, if you're worried about cash flow, you have some flexibility there. Exactly. All right, Josh, I want to make you laugh because A, I'm not sitting across from the table from you. So I'm going to see how this works over the internet. But also... This has really kind of been a depressing time in the markets and it's you know it, we don't it's hard to find a lot of good news and a lot of light in this. So let's lighten it up a little bit. Okay. You ready? Yes, I am. Dad joke of the week, virtual online. Why did the graduate think sidewalks in his graduation speech? I'm not sure why. For keeping him off the streets. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So, dad joke of the week brought like to you it. virtually. Love it. It's great. So, Josh, what are some things that Maybe word that we're doing here, especially in Ohio, that we've gotten some guidance for, or some things that people can can do to help out the greater good here. Yeah, so there's the high level guidelines that we were kind of talking about. The federal government and then some of the states have come out with some suggestions. So the first one is, if you can quarantine or stay home, avoid contact as much as possible. So they said 15 days. That was a couple of days ago. 15 days working from home. Uh, so that's one thing. If you're capable, um, just to avoid that extra contact, work from home. Uh, the second one is, and we saw this with uh, toilet paper, is don't don't hoard, don't overbuy to stockpile more than you really need. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of needs, and you don't need a bunker full of toilet paper right now. Um, I'm pretty sure all of the symptoms for the coronavirus, even if you get it, uh, toilet paper does not really help with most of those. So, just do your best, keep what you need, but don't overextend what you're buying because um, there's a lot of people with needs out there. Right. And the stores that carry that stuff yes. are are going to remain open. Right. So don't, and, and hopefully, you know, once we got past this people freak out phase where people yep. bought truckloads of toilet paper, we're going to have normal demand, normal supply. People are going to be able to go to the store and buy the things they need. Yeah. And so my wife went to the store yesterday just to pick up a couple of small things. And while she was waiting in line, the people behind her were having an argument whether or not it was even legal for stores to limit the purchases. And I'm thinking, you know, they shouldn't have to, to begin with, but right. if they have a sign that says limit three packs of toilet paper per person, uh, that's to help everybody. Right. And you know, my thought went, well, they do that every Black Friday. You know, you can't go in and buy 15 of the Super Friday TV sales. They say right. limit one per, you know, they do it all the time. Yep. So, but the fact that these people are arguing makes me, they're not understanding the concept is you don't need 12 months worth of toilet paper stocked up because we've seen even in Europe, Italy, the stores are still open and they've been in quarantine since late February. The stores are still stocked. Yeah. There's still stuff there. It's if everybody just calms down and buys what they need, you know, you could buy two weeks worth of toilet paper. That's great because you're going to be there for 15 days. That's fine. Exactly. You know, I have six people in my household, so I do need a couple packages of toilet paper just to get through that time frame. Uh, I'm not hoarding it. I just know that when I have four kids, they tend to use toilet paper, and so I need some. Um, and then when it comes to groups of people, you know, avoid large groups um, if you can do it remotely if you can do it online great yep. uh, we saw a lot of churches step up and although it wasn't mandated they canceled services uh with the concept being you know if we can help the instead of hurt the situation that's for the better of the whole community and so and they that did number, some online services yeah and that number is going down yeah, so like it was 100 it was 100 then it was 50, 50. then it was 20 then it was 10 and now i'm hearing even five yep. is kind of <laughs> where we're headed. So again, one of my kids is in trouble. So I know we'll see what's going on at home. Yep. So yeah. So watch, it's just, if, if you stay home, you know, you should be, you should be fine and you're not infecting other people. Yep. You're just kind of doing your own thing. It's just avoiding groups if you can. And that's not saying don't go to the store and buy the things yep. you need. Don't get, don't go to the, you know, don't not go to the store and get your medicine or yep. your milk or whatever. That's fine. Be careful and wash your cart and hands and yada, yada, yada. But just don't, yeah, don't go to like, obviously restaurants in Ohio anyway are closed, but this is just a reason to not go yeah. do those things. And then personally, I mean, just hygiene is key. You know, oh, yeah. it, stay clean, um, avoid touching your face, your mouth, your eyes, yep. your nose. Um, I mean, because this, this virus is very contagious, but it, it needs a, a, a way of getting into your system. And so, you know, that's why staying, you know, six feet apart from someone, if you're talking to them or interacting is best because... 
even just the, the normal conversation you could have, you know, spit or whatever coming out of their mouth and you don't want it getting into your body. Right. Um, so avoid that close contact, wash your hands, you know, stay clean. Um, yeah. If you, and then also a big thing, like if you feel even a little unwell, just stay home. Yeah. It's, even if it's you fun. said there's no chance I had the virus, stay home. Yeah, just exactly. Be safe. Better safe than sorry. And then the next one is, I mean, we're in this together. Help each other out. There are probably people in your community that have needs. Um, if you're aware of them and have the ability, help out. I've seen a lot online, Facebook and those places where people are offering, you know, hey, if there's something going on with, especially with kids staying home now, there's a lot of kids that their food consumption during the school year is that lunch at school. Otherwise, they're not getting fed. Um, that people are just offering, hey, if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Right. Schools are offering to continue that program. Uh, they were able to get that passed by the the states where they were able to say, okay, we can continue this food subsidy program, come pick it up and you can have food. Uh, yes. And so there, there's opportunity out there, but you know, help out. Be willing to sacrifice a little bit of yourself for those that are more likely to be affected. Exactly. Is it convenient for Austin and I to be home working from home? No, it's very inconvenient. But if it's a little sacrifice that we could make just for the chance that I could affect or, um, you know, cause the disease to spread a little more, I'm willing to, to do that. Yep. Is it convenient for us to have to cancel plans? Um, no, it's not. But we're willing to do that because if we could save one person's life who is a uh, higher risk at getting this virus, then I'm, I'm willing to do that. Every and Hopefully day. a lot of people are. Yep. Let's do that together. So Josh, I guess the big takeaway is how should people feel about their, their finances, their investments, their, their, what should they do on that aspect of things? Because A, the market is really uncertain and B, things are t could be tough for people personally with, with some shutdowns and stuff going on right now. Yeah. So, you know, a couple things. First is, you know, hopefully you have a financial advisor. That's what they're here for. Financial advisors are here to help you out. Um, he or she should have a plan in place for you on what your long-term goals are how this is affecting it. Uh, they should be re-evaluating that. But from a shorter standpoint, um, hopefully you're in a risk situation where you're not overexposed, where this volatility, which is a lot, but it, it's still within norm. I mean, we've been down 30% before. We've, you know, we've seen these experiences. This is a little quicker than we normally see, but it's well within the long term what we've experienced. So hopefully you're in a spot where you're comfortable to ride this out and not make any drastic decisions. Exactly. And then the second one is just from a needs based, especially if you're in those industries that are or can be affected, make sure you have some emergency cash. We talk about that emergency fund. That's what it's there for. When there's a disruption to your normal life, you have some cash available where you're not having to sell something when it's down. You have some cash available to say, okay, I can pay for those things that are being disrupted and I don't have to touch my long-term investments. So exactly. make sure, you, and it's hard to talk about now. I mean, you should have been building the emergency fund a couple months ago, but the idea is if you have that cash, that's what it's for. Don't hesitate to use it. There's a lot of people that build that emergency fund and then are just too stubborn to ever use it. And that's what it's there for. If there is an exactly. emergency, use your emergency fund. Yep. Uh, but when you get the chance, refill that back up. So if there's more that comes down the road, you are capable of withstanding it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So as always, especially in these uncertain times, don't hesitate to check out our, our free gift to you, our brief list of eight principles of timeless investing, kind of eight principles that will keep you on track when things are choppy, when things are down, kind of like right now. So check that out on our website. It's free. Um, and we'd love to continue to provide these podcasts for you each and every week. And we're going to aim to do that even in this crazy time where we're working remotely or whatever. But if you could uh, help us support us by subscribing, leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, that'd be awesome. Also, don't hesitate to email us if you have any ideas or questions to hello at theinvestedbats.com. And uh, yeah, we'd love that you share the episode with friends and family. That would be awesome. Yep. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy and we will talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. 
Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.